Okay. All right. So welcome to Healthy Relationships. This is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about tonight is Teen Dating Violence Awareness. So, and as in any relationship, we got to get to know each other. So how I introduce myself, um, I want to let you know a little bit about me starting our relationship. So my name is Miss Tammy. I am married. I am a mom. I have four kids, two step, two biological. I really hate to say step, so two of my bonus children. I am the United States of Women Ambassador for Virginia. So what that means is that there are ambassadors throughout um, all of your all over the United States. And it's an initiative that was started under the Obama administration. I care um, women is Valerie Jarrett and Tina Chen. And what we do is to make sure that not only women that have a seat at the table, that our voices are heard at the table. So we fight for gender equality among women. I am also the host of Beyond Survivor with Tammy, which is a radio show dedicated to recognizing, empowering, and supporting survivors. And I am the founder of Real Girls, Responsible, Empowered, and Love. And that I just had an interview last week, and somebody asked me, what is my greatest accomplishment? And I think Real Girls is one of my greatest accomplishments because I actually absolutely love working with young people. So that's why Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is so dear to me because I love, love, love working with young people. So because we're talking about healthy relationships and it is Teen Dating Violence um, Relationship Awareness Month, I want to know what do you think a healthy relationship is? What are the characteristic traits of a healthy relationship? So at the left-hand top corner, you will see a Q code. So what you could do is use your phone and put your phone up there. And then that question will actually populate into your phone. And you can type in the words that you think describes a healthy relationship. If you are not near a phone, you could join at slido.com and just put F. Two five eight. So go ahead and put some words in there and then help me just tell me what a healthy relationship is. Some characteristic traits of a healthy relationship. Respect. That's a good one. Any other words? Trust. Able to, oh, I like that one. Able to be yourself. Open communication. All right, so thank you so, ooh, okay, safe. Oh, that's a really good one, safe. I love it, I love it. All right, so these are really good words. Able to be yourself, respect, trust, safe, open communication. So tell me, who put respect up there? Happiness without a but. Oh, I like that one. Who put um, respect? Could tell, someone tell me, like, why is respect important in a healthy relationship? Um, I put respect. And just because, like, when you're with someone, you don't want to be with someone who is putting you down all the time. Like, you want to be with someone who's going to lift you up and respect who you are and what you do in life. Exactly. And you want that respect to go both ways, right? Because it shouldn't be a one-sided relationship. Respect, if you're in a relationship, both of you should be respecting each other. Thank you so very much. What about open communication? Why is that important in a healthy relationship? Who put that there? I put, um, I put that there. I just think it's important to have, when you talk about safe spaces, you know, and to be able to kind of talk back and forth, have some transparency, um, and just really, really bring your full self, you know, to the relationship. Right. And open, and you're, and and that goes along with, right, like you said, having a safe space to communicate without you feeling like you're on pins and needles, without you feeling like, oh, I can't say something because that person may get upset, right? So thank you for that. Able to be yourself. Who put able to be yourself? And what does that mean? I I put that one and I feel like just with being able to be yourself as someone who expect who accepts you for who you are without um trying to change you or kind of suppress different characteristics of yourself. Right. And a lot of time, like the name of my business is flaws and perfections. And one of the things I say is a lot of time that we wear a mask. 
we mirror masks to cover up some of the things that we're feeling inside, even if it's happy or sad, or even as women in general, sometimes we put on a lot of makeup or we put on the false eyelashes or we put everything else to, to cover up how we really are. But being able to be yourself with that person, right? Even if you're silly sometimes, if you're happy sometimes, if you're sad sometimes, being able to be yourself and have that safe space for that open communication. And happiness without a but. I really want to hear what that means. Um, I put that one too. So I feel like a lot of times whenever I am um, working with people who are not necessarily happy in their relationship and they are suppressed by different things, it's kind of like, oh yeah, so-and-so treats me well, but, and then here comes the flow of thing, red flags that are typically ignored. <laughs> Right. Because we we know even if it's not within this realm, like if we're saying anything and we put a butt, like everything else that was a head, said in front of it is like going out the window. Right. Because once you put that butt there, it's like mm, like a hesitancy. Right. So happiness without the butt. I really like that because that's the first time I've seen that one. Happiness without a butt. I'm going to have to use that. And the last one is trust. Why is that important in a healthy relationship? Um, I also put trust and I feel this like kind of goes with open communication. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really important to be able to trust someone just knowing that they won't hurt you and just feeling welcoming with them like you can do anything with them. And um, I just think knowing that someone won't hurt you is really important in a relationship. And I feel like that um, you have to have a lot of trust in someone for that. What does trust look like, though? Could you give me a definition of a trust? Like, what would trust look like in a relationship to you? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> um, I guess just being able to tell someone, like, your secrets, kind of, and knowing that they'll keep them to themselves and won't, like, spread it around. Okay, good. And I'm not trying to pick on you. It's just that I know when I talk to a lot of young people and they're and I ask them, like, what does trust look like? They say, well, that he's not going to cheat on me or she's not going to cheat, cheat on me, right? But I think trust also involves, like, do you think that trust involves that you have to look through a person's phone? Because sometimes I hear that also, that they're, I can look through their phone. That's how I trust them. But do you think that equates to trust? Looking through I've personally phone? never done that. So, um... You know, I do think that could create a lot of issues, feeling like you need to go through someone's phone and looking through, you know, who they're contacting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like that could be an issue with trust if you feel the need to want to go through someone's information like that. All right. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Right. Because if you trust someone, you shouldn't have to go through their phone. Right. And if you're going through that phone, then maybe there is probably a trust issue that you're not being able to trust them that you feel like you need to do that. So those are very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for sharing. So we, I have a, one more. <laughs> good. So how many teens do you think are in an unhealthy relationship? And once again, you use again. You can pick which one you think. Do you think it's one in ten? Do you think it's one in three? Or do you think it's one in five teens are in an unhealthy relationship? One in five. One in five. I got a one in five. Anyone else can try? One in three. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, when is that? Okay. One in five. All right. One in three. And no one said one in ten. Why did no one say one in ten? You think that just a high number? Yeah, I just don't yeah. think that would be one. It's too high. Okay. The correct answer is one in three teenager is in a, in a unhealthy relationship. So that means if there's a classroom with six people in there, that two of them are probably in an unhealthy relationship. But the thing about it is that sometimes we don't even realize that we're in an unhealthy relationship. And I heard someone mention before about the red flags, but we don't even understand what the red flags are, especially as a teenager. So I was in a classroom last, well, doing a training last week, and I asked them, like, do they know why we even call it red flags? Do any of you know why we even say it's red flag? 
I wonder if it's, and I'm I'm in left field, but okay, <laughs> it's when like in sports when they have like you know flag on the play when it's like okay halt you know something didn't go right we need to review to see you know if this was in line that's what I thought about but that's a, I never stopped to think about it before you brought it up here but that's what comes to mind for me. All right, but you're, you're, you're good. You're you're on the right track, right? So anytime, so so say like if you're driving, right? You're in your car and you come to a stoplight and it's green. What do you do? You go. You go. You, go, you proceed, right? So wonder if you get to this uh, traffic light and it's yellow. What do you do? You, pr you may stop. You may proceed with caution, right? Because that's like, go ahead and say. But what if you get to the traffic light and it's, and it's red? What do you do? Stop. Stop. Because if you proceed through that red light, what's going to happen? What may happen? Get a ticket, cause an accident. Right. There's something that's good. There's something that's good that's not going to happen. Something that's not going to happen that's good, right? So that's kind of like how the concept is concept of concept of a red flag, right? So when we're in a healthy relationship, we get the green lights. We get the green flag. It's like, okay, yeah, everything is good. And we want to go ahead and proceed because we don't have to worry about anything. But then sometimes we feel something that is not right. It might not be right in our soul or in our spirit or whatever. So we start proceeding with caution and we're in the yellow zone. But then a red flag is something saying stop, right? Stop. Do not proceed. Do not change to green. Do not go to yellow. It's stop. Everything is off limits and we're going to stop right now. So that's why the color of red is so significant. And even, you know, when there's a poison bottle, what color is it? It's red. Everything symbolizes, you know, red that we're going to stop. So here's our team power and control wheel. Um, isolation. This is a red flag. Controlling what someone does, who they're seeing, where they go, who they're talking to. A lot of times when people are in unhealthy relationships and even as a teenager, they want to tell somebody. But the first thing when they tell somebody, they say, girl, I would leave him or I wouldn't deal with that or I wouldn't do that. So what happens is that person feels isolated because they can't talk to anyone because they feel like no one can understand. So and that's exactly what the abuser or the person that has the power and control what they want. They want the person to themselves, so they isolate them. Peer pressure, threatening to expose them to someone else. So it could be like, okay, if you don't um, have sex with me, I'm going to tell about something. If you don't come out with me, I'm going to tell one of the secrets that you told. So peer pressure. They're unable to anger their emotion. So they're telling you, putting you down, calling you fat, too fat, too skinny, too ugly, any other kind of emotional abuse. Using social status, treating someone like a servant, acting like the master of the castle. I don't know if anyone um, read about Chad Wheeler, the football player that abused his girlfriend. It would happen about two weeks ago. Has anybody heard about that? I'm sorry about that. You say you heard about it? Yes. Okay. So do you remember what he did in the beginning? Um, I don't. I, I didn't see the kind of um, layout of events. I just kind of remember um, part of what was happening, just at, kind of in that cycle of after the abuse and some of the things that triggered it. Right. So what he, what she said was that he was asking her to bow down. He was asking her to bow down to him, and she didn't bow down, and then things escalated from there. So using your social status and treating someone like a, a servant. Um, intimidation, intimidating them to make them feel afraid of you. And a lot of times when they're in an unhealthy relationship, you're going to feel afraid. Um, minimizing, denying, or blaming, saying, you know, if you didn't do that, I wouldn't have hit, hit you. If you had just listened, I wouldn't have hit you. Threats, making threats, and then actually carrying out threats. What I usually tell people is someone says that if you... Uh, if you leave me, I'm going to kill myself. A lot of times we think that that's just a threat and they want attention, but 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 believe them, right? Believe when they say that they're going to do something, even though you may not think it in your heart. Tell somebody else. And sexual persuasion, manipulating on making threats to get um, someone to have sex. And that means that asking them to have sex with even someone else. Any questions on a team power and control wheel? Because abuse is about power abuse is about manipulation abuse is about control so what are the different types of abuse 
So physical abuse. Can somebody tell me what uh, those physical abuse is? Hitting. Hitting. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Slapping, punching, scratching. Right. Physical abuse is hitting, punching, throwing, hitting someone with the object, any kind of punching, anything that is causing you bodily harm is physical abuse. Mental and emotional abuse. Somebody tell me what mental and emotional abuse is. Um, talking down to someone, just making them feel like they're incompetent or incapable of making decisions on their own. Right, exactly. And once again, or even just telling them um, that they're worthless, that you're nothing, that you can't do anything. And a lot of times people think that they say, oh, well, why would they let that person talk to them that way? But again, abuse is about manipulation and control. And once that person is under that spell of being controlled, no matter what someone else says, it's hard for them to get out of that. Financial abuse. I know a lot of people don't usually talk about financial abuse. So what does financial abuse mean? And especially as a teenager, what would financial abuse be? Anybody have an uh, idea? Uh, yeah, would that be just kind of someone who, if they're giving you money to kind of make you stick around or um, just if they kind of pay the bills and they're saying, oh, well, it just, I'm not going to pay it if you don't do this, that, or the third. That is exactly what financial abuse is. And a lot of people don't even think that financial abuse is abuse, but that's exactly what it is. As adults, it's sometimes that as a person has control over the finances, over the bank statements, that someone um, is controlling all the money. I used to be a peer counselor for a domestic violence agency, and I also ran the shelter. And I would have clients that came in there that didn't have any money, like they're husband would control all of the, their finances. So they would come into the sh to the agency and they we would just act like they were going grocery shopping. So their husband would give them maybe like $10. We would already have food there. So we would just give that to them because we were actually trying to create a safety plan for them. So they would hold on to that money and then they would go back to um, home and act like they went grocery shopping. Um, and as a teenager, what would financial abuse look like as a teenager? Because of course they're not living with that person. What do you think that would look like in a teen dating situation? Any ideas? I think that's still gifting um, or yeah. just what someone would um, want to continue to do. Or like if you're going out somewhere, then, well, I'm not paying for the date if you're right. not doing this, that, or the third, or you don't look a certain way. Right. I'm not paying for the date. Or if you stay with me, like say if you threaten to break up with them and they say, if you stay with me, I'm going to buy you those Jordans next week. If you stay with me, I'll buy you those Crocs next week. So just a manipulation is saying, okay, I'm going to hold this over you. Any kind of financial um, abuse. Social media and cyber abuse. What does that look like? Um, maybe posting an inappropriate picture of someone or just saying mean things and calling them names online. Right. And we know that even though they try to take away, that's still their digital footprint and it stays there. And that could lead to so many other things, not just abuse by that person, but it could be abusive by anyone else that starts to see it. Because once it's on social media and other people that are looking at it, sometimes that leads to something a little bit more serious. Right. Sexual abuse. Yes, any forms of um, just unwanted sexual touch interactions. Yeah, and sexual abuse could be, of course, that we're saying, you know, unwanted sexual advances. Um, I also was telling, doing training a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about if you are intoxicated, can you give consent? And the answer is no. So if some of you go to a party and you're drinking and then, you engage in some kind of sexual activity and you say, I said no, or I was thinking that I, you know, I didn't want it. That still is sexual, sexual abuse. Forcing you to have sex with other people is sexual abuse. So anything in that area is sexual abuse. Any questions or comments on the types of abuse? Um, I kind of, well, I kind of have a question slash comment. Sure. Um, I feel like a lot of people get confused about sexual abuse and um, a lot of people may not realize that they're being raped. 
mm. when rape is actually happening. Um, and I just feel like that's really important to point out to teenagers just to make them aware of like what is rape just because every state has like a different um definition of what rape actually is it's just a very um kind of difficult situation i think right thank thank you for that and also uh we want to emphasize that no means no right no matter what the situation is, what I tell my teens when I'm talking to them is say, even if you have all of your clothes off and you at that moment, you're saying, I'm ready to go. But then right before it's supposed to happen, you say, no, all bets are off. No means no. No matter no, what you're saying ahead of time, 10 minutes earlier, no means no. Also, it's not about what you have on, because I know a lot of time people say, oh, well, she shouldn't have those, that skirt on or she shouldn't have those, that blouse on. So when we say that, do you know what that that is saying or what that means when you're telling somebody that they shouldn't have something on? Do you know what we call that? Blaming the victim. Right. Exactly. It's called victim blaming. Because it's really not. I've, I've counseled people that have been sexually assaulted and they've had a whole um jogger suit on, hoodie and sweatpants. It's really about the abuser and it's not about the victim. So when we talk about it, we're saying that they shouldn't have been in that party. They shouldn't have been there with the, the only one with the guys there. Um, she wanted it in the beginning and then she said no, or she was making advances at me. She was looking at me. She was winking at me. That does not make a difference. No means no. And you're right. It is called sexual abuse, sexual assault. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other comments, questions? So I wanted to show a, a video. It's about 10 minutes long, and I want to have us to have a conversation over there, but I want you to look at the different things in here. I want you to tell me when you've seen the red flags um, and what she could have done, what he should have been doing differently, um, and even what you probably would have done in this relationship. Can you hear now? Yes, thank okay, you. Good. Thank you. Oh, hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. Happy one month anniversary. Oh, you remember. Thank you. Of course. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. So what do you want to do for this weekend? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. I'll sing it like... Did you go to the football game on Saturday? Yeah, I loved it. It was a blast. It was really awesome that we won. I know, right? And what about the after party? The after party was a lot of fun. I loved how a lot of my friends went there. It was a blast. <laughs> hey, I know, right? Hey. Hey, bestie. You look pretty today. Thanks. I have an important presentation today. I'm sure you'll do great. Thanks. Oh, hey. Are you kidding me? What? What are you wearing? I tried to dress up for you. Are you trying to get other guys' attention? No. Dude, calm down. She looks nice. Exactly my point. Stop checking out my girl. Josh, seriously, you're lucky that you have a girl that's this pretty. This is between me and her, so mind your own business. Let's go. So, Crystal, how's you and Matt's relationship? You know, we're good. Going to the movies more, more often, hanging out a lot. Didn't you guys make your um, three years already? Yeah, we did. It's been great. I love this color on you. Me too. My phone's going off. Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. In transition, Wade finds James! Oh my god, dude! Did you just see that dunk? What? What are you doing? Texting my girlfriend. I thought you invited me over here to watch the game, not for you to text your girlfriend like nuts. I did, but I still want to know where she is. Give her a minute to respond then. It's Josh. It's fine. Just let your nails dry. But you know how he gets. I know that, but your nails are, are wet. Just let them dry first. 
Yo, she still hasn't even texted me back. She better not be with another guy. Dude, you're out of control with your girlfriend. What? You've been arguing a lot with her, and you've been sending her texts like crazy. Whatever, man. Just watch the game. I really like this nail color. I know, me too. We have to definitely do it again. Hey. Hi. Why weren't you answering it in my text yesterday? I was over at Crystal's house and we were getting our nails done. Yeah, all right. Let me see your phone. Why? Do you have something to hide? No. Who's Matt? Josh, that's my boyfriend. Look, I told you before, mind your business. Ashley, let's go. Oh, Josh, you're hurting me. Is everything okay here? Yeah, we're just talking. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, guys. I'll see you in class soon, okay? Don't be late. Hi. Hey, Maria. Are you free for a minute to talk? Yeah, sure. Come right in. Awesome. Um, there's a student named Ashley White that, um... I wanted to talk to you about before I came here I seen her boyfriend grabbing her really hard in her wrist and um, I found that kind of strange I wanted to check in with you to maybe if you could talk to her Ashley White okay yes. yeah thank you I'll, I'll look into that and actually I'll call her down right now all right awesome yeah. thank you so much for your time okay thank, thank you. you bye hello mr. Miller hi how are you it's Maria Yes. Um, do you have Ashley White in your class? You do? Okay, do you mind sending her down real quick? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, you want to see me? Hi. Yeah, come right in. So, the reason why I called you down is because a teacher was concerned about you and your boyfriend. He saw earlier today you guys in the hallway, and he was grabbing you a bit aggressive. So, I just wanted to check in with you about that. No, I'm fine. We're fine. Are you sure? Yeah, he's aggressive, so he's a bit rough. Okay, well, just know that if you need anything, I'm here, okay? Okay. All right, Job. All right, babe. It's your turn. All right, I got a good one. A choir. That's thirty points. Looks like I won. Ah, good job, babe. You're so smart. Thanks, son. Hey, since uh, this game is finished, I gotta get going. So I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I completely forgot. I have made plans with some old friends to hang out. Don't worry about it. Have fun with your friends. Uh, uh, text me after if you want to, and I'll see you in school. All right, see you in school. I'll see you tomorrow, babe. That was a really good game. Yeah, it was. Okay, let's clean up. Ashley, what is that? Oh, it's nothing. You sure? Yeah, me and Josh were wrestling, and he hurt me a little bit, but we're fine. I don't know. You you guys have been arguing a lot lately, and I always hear you crying in your room. You don't even dress the same. We're just going through a rough time right now, but I'm fine. You don't seem happy, Ashley. I'm fine. Bye. Where are you going? I'm going to the movies with Josh. Dress like that? Yeah, I feel comfortable. Plus, Josh likes it when I don't dress up. All right, um, remember what we talked about, right? All right, bye. Have fun. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. So I was thinking about the drive home. Why wouldn't you let me touch you at the movie theaters? Like, what's going on with you? I just been thinking lately, like, today I was with my sister and her boyfriend, and they have such a good relationship. Like, he really treats her well. So are you trying to compare us to them? No, I'm just saying 
Maybe we should have a break between each other. Excuse me? But if I can have some time to think. Think about what? Leaving me? No, just to clear my mind. Listen. Al, you're hurting me. You are not going to leave me because if you do... You... Exactly what I'm talking about. We need a break. Say that one more time. We need a break between each other. Glasses, is it sunny in here or something? No, I have allergies and my eyes are too puffy. Let me get this makeup. Fine. What happened to your eye? It's nothing. Was it Josh? I don't want to talk about it. This has to end. We need to get help. I'm fine. I don't need any help. Yes, you do. I'm coming with you. Hi, so I've convinced Ashley to come in and talk to you about a situation that you guys met about. I'm proud of you, Ashley, for having the courage to come see me. It's okay, honey. I know this is hard. What you're going through is not easy. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what's been going on? You need to tell her the truth about what happened to your eye. Well, it seems like he's always mad about something and we fight a lot. He doesn't even like when I hang out with my friends either. It's like everything I do, I'm making him mad. So what it sounds like so far is that you're experiencing something pretty unhealthy. So how about I ask you some questions and we do a little assessment on your relationship? What kind of questions? There are questions about teen dating violence. Hi, my name is Hector Aliman, and I play Josh, the abusive boyfriend, in this public service announcement. Hi, my name is Natasha Santana, and I played the abused girlfriend. As a young man, I have strong opinions about what it is to be a man and what it means to be a man, and also how to respect a woman, regardless of her age. I have a message for anyone in an abusive relationship. Abuse can be taken out in many forms, emotional, physical, verbal, sexual. If you're in a relationship, that hurts you or doesn't make you feel good about yourself, you need to talk to someone and get help. Being a man doesn't mean using your power to hurt or abuse anyone. Being in a healthy relationship should mean that you give equality between the two partners. Your words should always give value and build strength on your relationship to never destroy it. Getting out isn't always easy, but it can be done. You deserve better. So, can someone tell me your thoughts on that video? I think it was multiple red flags and just different um, different forms of abuse that kind of escalated throughout. Okay, where were some of the but in there on just focusing on like, oh, he's a good boyfriend, but he's a wrestler, so he's rough or just things like that. What were some of the red flags that you've seen in the beginning? before it became physical? I would say um, he just had a controlling approach, you know, from day one, whether it was who she was with, what she had on, what she looked like, um, just um, definitely controlling and a bit over overbearing um, about her. Right. So we did so remember in the beginning, the first thing we saw was that he spoke about her clothing, right? He told her about her clothing. And when someone else looked at her, he said, don't, you know, look at my girlfriend. So 
jealous. He was extremely jealous. He was the constant texting. What did y'all think about the constant texting? I think that falls into just that that overbearing and lack of trust. All right. So many to I have a girls program, um, but when I was in school, I used to be a youth program director and I would do co-ed classes. I would go, we would go in as a team and take over the family and consumer life classes. And a lot of the guys would tell me that girls are actually doing the constant texting. Mm -hmm. Right. So there, you know, I know we've seen this video with him doing this constant texting, but it was a lot of time that the girls are doing the constant texting. And they would say to me, Miss Tammy, you know, I'm in the middle of NBK2 or whatever video game that they're playing and their girlfriend is constantly texting them, constantly texting them. And sometimes they didn't pause, you know, they felt like they couldn't pause to the game because you know how boys are. They didn't want to pause the game and respond, but then that started an argument. So then I would turn to the girls and say, are you listening to what these guys are saying? You know, like, they're not doing anything, but you're thinking they're doing something because they're playing a the video game. And their response would be, well, they should stop and just tell me something or they have to just get off, get off the game and speak to me. Because if I text you and you don't respond back, I'm going to keep on texting you anyway. Yeah. So I felt like that was kind of like what this guy was doing. And that's a red flag, <laughs> right? It's a, a red flag. And I will also say, because, you know, I have a son and sometimes you're texting. If I, I know you're texting and one if he's in the shower, one if he's in trouble, one if he can't get to the phone. And they would still say, well, you would just still have to go ahead and respond to it. So what do you guys think about that? Because I know we've seen a video. It was the guy that was in a constant texting. But have you known any um, issues or heard anything about the girls actually doing the constant texting? I've heard that um, and I can definitely believe that piece and even just with how it falls into those silent categories of just the abuse that males experience in a relationship that they're kind of expected to overlook or not necessarily address or something is kind of just swept under the rug as normal or expected. Right. So there's one in 10 boys, right? Even though it's one in three girls, there's one in 10 boys that are in unhealthy relationships that are physically, emotionally, mentally abused in a relationship. And a lot of times they don't want to come out because they don't want to be called names or they want to, they don't want to seem like they're soft. But girls could be just as abusive as guys. And what that comes from is insecurities. Because as we've seen in this video, he was probably very insecure, right? So that's the same thing the girl could be um, insecure. What other red flags did we see in this before it became physical? Taking the phone. Taking the phone, yes. Trying to see, and we spoke about that earlier, right? Taking the phone to see who she was calling. What about when she um, made excuses for him? Why do you think she did that? Maybe she doesn't want to get him in trouble or maybe she's scared that if he finds out that she told someone about him that he'd um, take it out on her. You're right. You're right. And even in adult relationships, you know, outside of the teen relationships and you're getting older, what happens when you talk to somebody and if you're not, not even if you're in unhealthy relationships, when you're just venting with one of your friends and saying, oh my goodness, he's getting on my nerves. They get to kind of get a perception of that person, right? So in the unhealthy relationship, that is mass because they're thinking like, I don't want people to not like him because even though they don't want the abuse, we make our, our um, hearts overrule our minds, right? So their love is still there, but they, so we still want to protect that, that, that person. So that's why we're protecting them. Um, what else have you seen in there? Why do you think it became physical at the end? You know, I felt like she was finally, um, she stood up for herself, mm -hmm. you know, she said how she felt, um, she expressed it, even when he said, you know, you're not leaving me, she said, well, I need time, you know, and I think in that moment, um, and it, it might have been the first time that I think we saw it in the film, mm -hmm. she said she went against, you know, she didn't just go along with what he said, um, and then you saw the the physical um you know, altercation happened. So you're exactly right. So the most dangerous time in an abusive relationship is when the person actually decides to stick up for themselves and they decide to leave. 
So I know a lot of time we think that the whole time they're in a relationship is pretty bad. It is pretty bad. But once that person decides to leave, the relationship goes to a different level. And that is because that person, the abuser, has lost control. Because when they're in a relationship, even if she says, I'm going to leave or I'm tired of this, she's still there. Right? He still has that control. He or she has that control to say, yeah, you said you were going to leave last week, but you're still here. And that's not even just in teen relationship. That's in adult relationships as well. But when that person decides to say, I'm tired of it, I'm leaving, I'm not happy, then the abuser says, wait a minute, I'm losing control here and I need to gain back that control. So in order for me to gain back that control, I'm going to use physical force. That's another reason why when you hear about people in unhealthy relationships and they say, um, but this person had a protective order, but they still lost their life. Or this person left, they, they separated from that person or they still lost their life. That's because the abuser said, I don't have control anymore and I'm trying to get this control back. Because the whole time they're saying, okay, you're here, you're not going anywhere. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yes. Okay, so any questions on that? On anything that we said so far? If there was a trigger for you all, um, I apologize, there is a National Teen Dating Abuse Hotline that is on here that you could call because I know some of this thing, if it is um, trigger anything for you, please let me know. And we can talk about it before we move on. And would you mind just exiting it out where it says more videos so the hotline can show, and I'll read it out for anyone who can't see it, but that number is 866-331-9475. Or you can visit www.loveisrespect.org. And there's also, if you're a Henrico County um, student, please feel free to reach out to your um, counselors, supports, or um, even about any of our contacts at Henrico Mental Health. Thank you for sharing that. Also, this number is an anonymous line. So you could call without them knowing who you are. And when you go to the website, actually, when you go to the website, there is going to be a banner that picks up and say, if you are unhealthy relationship and you need to exit right now, you could click that button and it will exit it out and it will come up with a totally different screen. Because sometimes abusers, of course, they track where you're looking. Right? And we don't want that to happen. Any other questions or comments? Um, I just had a quick comment. This video sure. really reminded me of the power and control wheel just because it kind of started out slow and he seemed like nice and sweet and then like the red flags just add up and then sometimes we'll just turn into that cycle of abuse. Exactly. And you know what is that called? That that little period that in the time before things could happen. Do you know what it's called? Um... I don't know why I was thinking like a honeymoon phase, but. Oh I'm my gosh, yes, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's a honeymoon period, right? So when I'm in schools, I ask the students like, how long do you think it takes to get to know somebody? And I hear three weeks, I hear two months, I hear um, six weeks. And when I say so, you know, it's actually like take a whole year. And they're like, Miss Tammy, we're young. We're not old like you. We don't need to get to know somebody in the whole <laughs> whole year. And I said, but you know, in the beginning, that's what, exactly what it is. It's like that honeymoon period. Like everyone shows the good side of them in the beginning, right? Everyone wants to have their, their hair nice and they're talking to you nice. But then as you gradually get to know someone, that's when other things come out. And I tell them like when they're in school, you're only seeing them for a short period of, this, of time, right? So I say, get to know them through the school year. Get to know them in the summertime when they're not in, in school. Get to find out, like, if you're dating them or you're just being friends, go to their house and see how they're acting with their parents. You know, get to know all the all of that stuff because I said, you know what? We all put on something up front, right? But everybody doesn't see. Everyone doesn't see what we wake up, like, in the morning. Maybe now during COVID because people get on <laughs> on the screen looking different ways. But you don't really know how that person is. So, exactly, that is a honeymoon period. And as things get comfortable... As a relationship progresses, things happen. Like, thank you. That, that was really good. Any other comments? Questions? So some of our takeaways are healthy relationships respect each other. So it's not one-sided. We want to respect each other on both sides. Just like I was saying, you know, I know we do a lot of things. We see that often the girls in the unhealthy relationship or girls being abused, the boys are in unhealthy relationships also. And we want that same kind of respect and courtesy that they're giving to us that we want to give back to them. 
Don't do anything that you are not emotionally ready for. I'm going to say that again. Do not do anything you are not emotionally ready for. Because once again, our heart overrules our mind. And sometimes when we get into a relationship, you know, that takes over. And even when we're seeing the red flag or sometimes we don't even know that's a red flag and we don't even know when to stop. Because once again, uh, like I said, the girls don't think calling and texting constantly is a red flag. They're just thinking you should be answering my, my phone call. Um, I am a domestic violence survivor. And when I was dating um, my abuser, when I was young, I would go out. And when I would go out with my girlfriends, he would just be at certain places where I was. And I did not know that was a red flag. Now that I'm educated in domestic violence and intimate partner violence, now that I know that was stalking, but at that time I didn't. And even my girlfriends didn't know at the time. They just thought that they would just say, Tammy, there's your crazy boyfriend. And we would laugh it off, not knowing that that was a red flag that I should have paid attention to. Having sex is giving away a part of you that you will never get back again. So don't have anyone force you to do anything sexually that you are not ready for, right? Because once you give that part away from you, you cannot get it back. If someone loves you, they will wait. They will wait for anything. They will be respectful to you. They will wait until you're ready to do anything. And they will be there for you afterwards. No means no. Again, no means no. And you have the right to say no, not just even in a sexual relationship. No, say, hey, I don't want to go on a date tonight. That's okay, right? Do you want to go out? No, I'm going to stay in with my friends. And no means no. There was a part of the video that when she was talking to, um, I think it was her sister, and they were playing a game. And she said, her boyfriend said, but I'll see you tomorrow. And she said, oh, I forgot I'm going to be with my girlfriends tomorrow. He said, okay, go ahead and have fun. Respect that you know she's going to do something again respect goes both way love does not hurt and i know when we're in a relationship is not going to be you know bells and whistles at all times there are going to be some kind of um, disagreements because that's a healthy relationship also but we're going to be able to bounce back and handle conflict in an effective way but love does not hurt if you're feeling discouraged all the time if you're feeling afraid if you're feeling like you can't go anywhere if you feel like you cannot do anything right if you feel like you're constantly walking on eggshells that's not a healthy relationship abuse is never okay under any circumstances Sorry, my thing too. Under any circumstance, it is never okay. You are not at fault. And once again, we talked about victim blaming. So no one should blame you for being abused, and it's not your fault. It is never your fault. No matter what you had on, no matter what you said, it's not your fault. Again, we talked about boys can be abused also. Um, it's okay to wait. I know you're, you're teenagers, you're teenagers, and you want to have a boyfriend because you've seen everyone with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but it's okay. Like, it's okay not to have a boyfriend or girlfriend in middle school. It's okay not to have a boyfriend or girlfriend in high school, you know? Get to know you. Love yourself. Have friends. Have fun. Don't You don't need to be tied down. You are worth the wait, and you deserve respect. Any questions on any of those takeaways that I said? Once again, I'm giving you the resource is loveofrespect.org. If something doesn't feel right, there are peer advocates that are there to talk 24-7. You could chat at loveisrespect.org. You could text love is to 22522, or you could call 1-866-331-9474. And once again, those are anonymous. You could go ahead and make the phone call. If you are online and you're trying to reach them, you, there is a screen. Like I said, you could go ahead and get out of it so no one could even tell that you are on this. Once again, my name is Miss Tammy, um, and my organization is Floss and Perfection, but I primarily work with girls at Real Girls. And since it is Black History Month, I wanted to end with you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it's right by Miss Rosa Parks. So whatever you feel like is doing your right, you're doing right within your heart. And the choices that you make, even in dating or in friendships, make sure that you know that you're doing it, it is right. <laughs>